All right, Alex, another episode of Optin is here. Congratulations to you, the listener, for being able to listen to us. No, I'm kidding. We got to start over. I just, I started talking and my brain was like, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. That's it. Congratulations to you. I was like, what did I win? <laughs> A brand new car. Oh, boy. All right. <clears throat> Alex, it's another episode of Opt In. We've got five minutes on the clock today, and I wanted to touch on a topic that we've talked about a few times here and there, personalization, but more specifically, not what it is, how you can best do it. Because I think a lot of people look at personalization and they're like, okay, like, meet me halfway, right? You're telling me that if I want to get in touch with someone, if I want to grab someone's attention, the message needs to be personalized. Great, of course. You were also saying that as an SDR, I need to do 150 activities a day. Something is wrong here, right? Like I can't do both of those things at the same time. And you're right, you can't. That would be erroneous to imagine that you can get 150 personalized messages out in a single day. What you can do, however, and this is something that I employed as an SDR and something that we at Demand Drive encourage all of our SDRs to do, is tier your accounts so that you're personalizing the messaging that makes the most sense to personalize. Basically, you exert the most effort on the accounts that move the needle the most. So for me, I set up a system that I called good, better, best. Very basic. I had three tiers of accounts that I worked on a regular basis. My good accounts were just like a reservoir list, maybe webinar registrants, um, some purchased lists, some old leads from previous databases. They existed. They were kind of in our audience. That's it. They were great for sending out some type of industry-based or persona-based email blast isn't the right word, but getting like 40 to 50 of those out at a single time. Then there was a next year above that where they were in our ICP and they had some type of reason to be in a cadence. So I put them through a regular eight to 12 touch sales cadence. And then there was the cream of the crop, 25 to 50 target accounts that I had at any given time, the best accounts possible that I personalized every message for. Nothing that they got could be misconstrued for another person because it was a one-to-one, I'm only talking to Alex Ellison type message. Uh, For me, it meant that I was able to get volume in with my tier two and tier three accounts with the quality of my tier one accounts. Work for me, not to toot my own horn, I was a pretty good SDR. I know it's worked for other people out there, but I'd love to hear Alex, if you had a similar situation, um, what your personalization strategy was like, your experience on the matter. Yeah, I would say I had a similar situation that was probably a little less organized. I'm kind of noticing that that that's the trend between us two. Yeah, as wait a minute here. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so it was definitely a situation where I would say maybe treated a little bit more case by case. But I would look, you know, I would a I would work with uh, you know the account executive on their target accounts. That was their list they gave me. I knew those ones were important, right? So that's up there. After that, I would definitely do some research on an account and contact level, and then basically case by case decide instead of, I guess, putting in buckets what you did, I would just go from there and say, okay, how much am I personalizing this? So yours might've been a little more efficient, but I think you, you're still hitting the same, the same marks there where it's Mm -hmm. volume is important. Personalization is important. They both don't have to happen at the same time or to the same people. That's yeah. kind of one of the, I feel like maybe a misnomer in the industry. People talk about both these things, but if you don't talk about how or why or when you do each of those things, it can definitely get misconstrued. Um, and that's right. That's where you run into people who are like low on their activities. Cause they're like, I need to personalize everything or somebody who's low on results. Cause they're like, I just need to send this many messages. Finding that balance between the two, and, and I think bucketing your system is probably a pretty simple way to do it, better than my ad hoc system. Eh. Um, I mean, if but it yeah, works, having, it works, right? having some sort of way, yeah, at least having a mindset and say, like, okay, like I found three people, it might apply to their job at this one company that's kind of fits the target, Just send them a bunch of messages. I found the right person at the right target account with the right like responsibilities, like, I know that's them. I'm going to personalize it. I'm going to, you know, do all the things I need to to make the chances of me reaching and getting a hold of them as high as possible. Yeah. And you brought up a point earlier that I think 
uh, ties into this as well, but they don't just not exist at the same time, but there's often also that debate of quantity or quality, like they're competing ideas, throw that out the window too. You have to, you have to do both, like we talked about. It doesn't make sense to just only send out highly targeted personalized emails, and it doesn't make sense to just send out a bunch of untargeted, non-personalized emails. Specifically, the second one, do not only do that. That's a really <laughs> bad idea. Uh, you need to find that balance, like you were saying. And I think I found a, a system that worked for me. You found a system that worked for you. It is kind of just a figure it out type situation where as an SDR, you, you understand what works best for you. If it's bucketing accounts, if it's doing it a case by case basis, find the system that works. And if it works, no one's going to like, I can't tell you that you're doing it wrong if you're seeing results, right? So it's a lot of testing, a lot of figure it out as you go along. But once you find something, then you can start to build on it, iterate it and make it a process rather than a case by case basis type thing. Yeah, makes total sense. All right, AJ, 15 seconds. Tell everyone about opt-in. Opt-in, quick, five-minute videos, no fluff, actionable tips. You can find us on our YouTube, on our LinkedIn, on our Instagram, and on the website, demandrev.com. I hate you. <laughs> Why? What did I do wrong? I, I don't know. Four words. Three more than yep. Yeah, yep.